Let's talk about the Nahachi ankle crank. Now I've done this knockout many times since 1997, 98, somewhere in that time frame. Always using the same um, target and um, pressing on it. And it's a rapid pulsing action that does it. And you're going to notice that in the ankle area, the inner ankle area here, we have some vascular tissue. We also have some nerve structures. First of all, this nerve structure here is called the saphenous nerve. This one back and through here is under the fascia. Let me get rid of the fascia and connective tissue. And we'll go in here, and this is the medial curl cutaneous branch of the saphenous nerve. So same nerve ties into the same area, which is good because when you compress both of them against the bone here, as you can see, um, this bone uh, is called the tibia. And when you crush it into the tibia, what's going to happen is the, um, the nerve shock is going to be translated on the same nerve, but from two different branches. So uh, it will converge uh, where the uh, nerve uh, comes into each other. And uh, then you'll cause uh, more of a shocking action. You'll also notice these blue lines here. Let's see if I can catch it here. This is the great saphenous vein. Okay, now there's no artery um, really close here, but you can see one back in here, this red uh, line in through here. This is the tibial artery. Now, when you do this crank correctly, you get both the um, vein and the artery and as well as the nerve. Okay, so there's um, a double whammy. You've got the blood systems being affected. You also have the nerve system being uh, affected. Now, how we have to do this is you have to um, push away this muscle group in here by going in a direction backward, okay? And that's when you first set the lock or first starting to set the lock in. And that will um, expose uh, the artery and also pull the veins and the uh, nerves uh, closer to the back of the bone where then you're going to um, pull it into the bone and let's get the pen back out here we'll pull it into the bone and also downward away from the um, torso of the body and what that is going to do is it's going to put a strain on the blood systems so the blood can't return to the heart and it's um, pulled faster from the heart and it causes the blood pressure to drop a little bit and that's why the people um, pass out okay they faint okay from the um, drop in blood pressure. Now, you would have to put a very intense power into that to really cause them to pass out on a full pass out. We can get to a good deep level two where the person uh, can't really function and they don't know really coherently where they are. They can hear, sometimes they can see, sometimes not, sometimes they fade to black. And uh, then uh, you could be on your way or you could escalate your, your fight. Now, we see this posture being demonstrated um, here uh, following in the knockout. And then at the end, there's a, a, an additional link to an additional film I did here on YouTube so you don't have to go searching for it again that has um, several of these same type knockouts uh, being displayed. So there you go. There's the ankle crank from Nahanchi. Uh, that's where I learned it from, uh, my studies of Nahanchi. Uh, it's a very valuable tool, and you can do it from a prone position as well as standing. So have fun with it. Be careful. You can knock the person unconscious. It doesn't have to be on the head like you see.
on the arms. It could be on the legs. It could be on the hands. You could do knockouts anywhere as long as you get a uh, nerve or blood vessel. Okay, this was a little combination, but more nerve. Okay. Uh,